Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard. We have a very special power pack show. Today, we're going to be talking about a very special topic. My dream, my vision, the reason why I never gave up in spite of. We have three very special guests on the show. These are professionals in their career doing big things actively now. One gentleman is an actor, a singer, a songwriter, a producer, and has been in many films as well as commercials, including McDonald's. He's been on Chicago Fire. He's done plays all over the Chicago land, Las Vegas and Los Angeles area. And he's a really good friend of mine, Mr. Eugene Parker. Welcome to the Sherrard Show. How are you, sir? Good, Sherrard. Man, so happy to be here. Hey, so everybody. Glad so glad to have you. So glad to see you. And then we have another young lady. Um, she's been plays. Um, she's also very popular on the comedy uh, sector. She's done big things um, in movies as well. And she is from the west side of Chicago, and she stopped by to be on the Sherrard Show this <laughs> evening. Uh, this is Sheree Bynum. Welcome to the Sherrard Show. How are you, young lady? Thank you. Thank you. I am doing wonderful. So happy to be here. Very good. So glad to see you. And then we have a gentleman. This man is a platinum singing artist. Uh, he's an acclaimed singer and songwriter. He's recently done the rendition of Prince honoring his legacy and has done it so eloquently. And now he currently has uh, multiple CDs out here. Starting everywhere. The singer, the producer, the very talented Mr. Morris. Mills. Welcome to the Morris everywhere. I can't hear. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. So glad um, he is really rocking a nice shirt and he's really doing big things um, in the industry. Now, I brought you all here because I want you all to be encouraged as well as to inspire those who are looking to do exactly what you all are doing in the industry and also to hear your story about how you got to where you arrived to today and where do you plan on going. Now, Gene, let's hear a bit, of, a bit about your story and how you arrived to where you've come and why you never gave up in spite of all the things you've gone through. Okay, um, wow. I, I, I've just been performing, you know, since I was a kid. I, I started off, you know, singing in the choir at Saints of Mind with Mike Blake, you know what I'm saying? And early in high school, I, I was in my first play as a freshman in high school at Mendel High School. Mendel, wow, I haven't heard that. At Mendel. And uh, I was in my first play then, and I fell in love with the, with the standing ovation. Now, how, now, Eugene, how old were you then? I was 14. I was and 14. So I was a freshman. I was a freshman. I was in my first play, and I was just hooked from there. You know, I'd always been singing and doing music, uh, but I, I really got hooked and, and really got into acting as a freshman in high school. You now, now Jean, um, everybody has things that they've gone through. Now, in Mendo, first of all, for those who are watching on different coasts, um, Mendo was a high school that was in um, uh, Chicago. As a matter of fact, if I believe you, it was like on 100, right off 111th, is that correct? 111th and King Drive. Okay, and it was changed to St. Martin de Porres years later, is that correct? Now, now it's Gwendolyn okay. Brooks. Okay, gotcha. Magnet School. Now. Okay, now, um, Jean, with your career, as you progressed on, um, did you have faced many challenges as an actor? Well, most definitely. Um, as an actor, it was more uh, learning, trial and error. It was getting out there. I studied. You know, I went to DePaul University uh, for a year, and then I moved to Miami. I went to Florida Memorial College, a UNCF school. Oh, HBCU. You know, and then I, I studied down in Miami. Um, but the, the challenges were really uh, getting yourself in position to work. You know, I was really more into music. We're talking about in the 80s, in the early 80s, early to mid 80s. And so I really got more into, into the music piece of it. So we down, uh, you know, the two live crew was doing a thing and uh, Crockett and Tubbs, uh, you know, they got a, a recording studio down in the Miami area. So everybody was trying to create their own label back in the, in the, in the mid to late 80s. And so I really stepped away from the theater and, and started, you know, concentrating on music. 
Now I'm gonna throw this. Um, I'm gonna throw this at you, Sharice. Now, um, Sharice has um been doing many things. As a matter of fact, um, she has been acting and doing a very good job. We started in a few plays as well as programs, and really taking advantage of um her talents and being so easy to work with. Now, Sheree, what kind of challenges have you faced being an actress, first of all, in Chicago and being an African-American actress? I would say some of the challenges I have faced is uh, probably just not getting the exposure uh, or not getting access to the uh, exposure that I may want to get access to. So uh, a lot of people say, oh, you have to go to L.A. or, oh, you have to go to New York. Or, oh, you know, so you kind of run into that of, of <clears throat> where should you be? But what I've learned is I am where I'm supposed to be, you know, and that's and you just connect the dots because one project leads to another project leads to you networking and, you know, finding somebody else. And I've worked with Eugene on a lot of things and it's been phenomenal. So it's just to me kind of a game of, of connect the dots. So the main thing is you just have to be present. Now, you know, um, you've been doing a lot of very impressive things. Um, you've done commercials, you've done print ads, and you've also um, produced Laugh Until You uh, Laugh to Keep From Crying. Is that correct? Now, That's what was correct. That oh, my gosh. Okay, so it's so much violence going on in the world, and especially in Chicago. I'm from Chicago. So violence begets violence. So one summer, I was like, we have to do something. It's just so much violence. Let's put some comedy out there and then maybe that'll get the momentum rolling for more comedic things and people could laugh to keep from crying, literally, you know, and so that was the name of the production. And so um, I'm good friends with Christine Houston, well, Miss Christine Houston, the writer of uh, the hit TV show 227. And uh, we got together and she is just a hilarious, phenomenal woman. I love her with all my heart. And I just wish somebody out there, if you have connections to anybody that can get this woman, she's 80 something years young. Her mind is vibrant, fresh. She is hilarious. She has a plethora of um, a series called Everyday uh, Life and there are different skits. And so I commissioned her and we put those skits on and I produced that play at Victory Gardens Theater and played like seven characters in five skits. So it was all live, a la Carol Burnett. So it was my tribute to the Carol Burnett show. And I would have loved to brought Carol Burnett down there. It was phenomenal. It was like one of the highlights of my career. And now we're going to talk more about that as well. Um, anything that has to do with laughter, I'm all for it. Because we know yes. that's, that's all life is about, is just having fun and laughing in terms of that. Now, let's talk, let's turn it to the gentleman who is um, an iconic young man who's doing really big things in the industry. This man can produce an album faster than most people can produce a single. And he's um, done some great and big things in the industry um, with the wonderful sound, especially as we spoke about even more with Love and Coffee, his new album he's just released. Mr. Morris Mills. So tell us a little bit about how you got started in the industry, Morris, and what led to your chart topping success. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Uh, hello, everybody. How's everybody? Hey, what's up, man? Good, good. Can everybody hear me? <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, the, uh, well, it started with Love and Coffee back in 2004. We was writing and producing independent films. I don't know if you guys know a good friend of mine. His name is William Pierce. Uh, he's a writer and director. So um, what I decided to do at that time is to release a movie along with the soundtrack, you know? And I started, you know, I started meeting a lot of people that they were producers, independent producers and filmmakers. So then I started to meet a lot of agents. So it just took, you know, just, just as Sheree said, you just gotta, you know, just gotta keep meeting people and keep, keep, keep connecting the dots, you know. But my current album is called uh, Revival, uh, right? So, uh, you know, you know. Now, what was your inspiration behind the uh, album Revival? The times, the times that we're living in, you know, this song. Uh, uh, 
right before this pandemic just broke, you know, I wrote an album called The Dawn, right? And if you listen to The Dawn, it just, it's really dealing with the affairs of the world. People are crying, people are dying, people are loose, people are just, you know, just the world, right? So my album is, is spiritual, you know, because you know, I'm a Christian. And I like to tackle those things that are spiritual and worldly and try to intertwine the two. So what came about that? It came from it came from the dawn, right? And it just spilled over to revival. Very good. Now we're gonna talk more about um, your album and even have a few snippets of it as well. Now for those Please. who just tuned in, we are talking to Mr. Eugene Parker, Cherie Bynum, as well as Morris Mills. These are people that are doing big things in the industry of entertainment, music, um, as well as entertainment, and they're doing some great things. But the thing is that oftentimes people watch, and it's a saying that I often say, Gene, I'll throw it to you first. They see all the glory, but they don't know your story. Mm. They see the end product, and they envy that, but they don't know what you've gone through to get to where you are. Gene, what is some one of the hardest things you had to do in the process of becoming Mr. Eugene Parker? You know, one of the toughest things that one of the things that's been toughest is how my journey has affected my family mm. and how my commitment um, and, and my faith walk doesn't look right to the world. You know what I'm saying? As far as whether I'm working a, a 40 hour week job or not or whether I'm, you know, pounding the pavement. And so it, it's put a strain on, on, on my family at times, you know. Um, they, they talk about starving artists, but we bless and highly favored. So, you know, we ain't missing no meals, but, but, but they're strained. And then, you know, I have a wife who, you know, who needs security. Well, I almost said amen right there. I'll preach. You know, and so so those are some of the things that were, are really tough when you're when you're in this and it's not a uh, it's not a hobby when it's your career. Now, really now, now, now let me ask you a question, Gene. You, you're saying something very interesting, and I'm going to toss it to you, Morris, and I'm going to toss it to you, Sheree, as well. Yeah. So listen to um, what I'm going to ask. Now, Gene, when you say it put a strain on your family, um, like your wife. Now, first of all, is your wife in the industry as well? She is not in the industry. So it makes it that much tougher, huh? Well, she understands, but she's like, you know, do your thing, do you. And so she's very supportive. She, she's supportive 100%. She's like, so, you're going to do it. Let's do it. You so, Gene, when you so, say a strain, you mean like um, the time away from the family? What do you mean? It's time away from the family. Financially, there's, there's been tough times, you know. And uh, you, when you're waiting on the next gig and so that's one reason i got i got behind the camera and i got into mm -hmm. as morris was saying i got into producing and, and shooting and filming and ad and so you know i'm 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 both sag and dga so if i'm not working in front of the camera i can work behind the camera and still bring a paycheck into the household so very good very good you what about position yourself what about you sheree what is one of the hardest things you've had to do um, being an actress, a producer in this industry. I concur with Eugene. Um, starving artists, I have cried in my car. I have cried at night because things don't come to fruition like you think they should. And, you know, as they say, uh, you know, it's all in God's timing, and I definitely trust that. But there have <laughs> been moments where it's like, you know, every project you do, you think it's the project that's going <laughs> to catapult you to success. You're like, this is it. No, this is it. Now what? And then it, it right. those projects sometimes don't even have a fizzle. you like, I thought that mm. was it. You know? And so, you know, you just have those moments. You know, everything you do, whether I'm doing something pro bono or I'm getting a, a you know, a certified check, I'm going to give a thousand percent no matter what. And so you put the, the commitment in, you put the time in, you put your energy in, and sometimes you feel like you don't get in return what you think you should get back. But again, you know, I heard somebody 
on this line say they were Christians. So we know it's not in our time, it's in his time. We right. just got to right. keep doing the work. And so I think that's some of the hardest part is monetarily uh, your gifts don't match what you're putting out there. And that's the hard part. Now I'm single, so I'm the primary breadwinner. So when I take time to do a project, that means I'm some work getting held up. You know what I'm saying? You know, so it's hard to have a corporate America job and have a passion for acting because they can collide with each other. So those have been some of the hardest parts for me is, is balancing having a job to pay the bills or saying, you know what? I'm, 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 I'm about to just do this. So for the next six months, I'm going hard and I know something's going to hit. Mm-hmm. And month eight done came and Right. That's very true. You're very true. <laughs> you're, you're all preaching. You're preaching, you're preaching big time. <laughs> and you know, one thing too that's very interesting that you said um, is that, you know, um, see, when auditions come over, they come at a time when you least expect it. They'll come at eight in the morning, 11 o'clock, you know, you're just getting your coffee. All of a sudden, you get a call and say, We need you here downtown Chicago. Um, they're doing this and this and that, you know, and you have a dilemma. Are you going to tell your manager? Are you going to use a sick day? What are you going to do? And it puts you in a tough spot because you don't want to miss the opportunity. Matter of fact, you can't focus on work because you don't want to think what you could have missed. Is that correct, Morris? Yeah, yeah, because I've been there, been there, done that, you know. But you know what? I made up in my mind um, a long time ago, about four years ago, that I was going to pursue this full time. I wasn't going to have no plan B. And I, I couldn't afford a plan B because if I had a plan B, my cushion on my job, then I wouldn't push. And I wouldn't be able to put out the albums uh, as much as I put out. You know, uh, I want to put out an album every year. You know, um, simply because this is what I do. I think someone told me this um, about a month ago. You were born to do this. It was just waiting for you to realize and catch up. Mm, I love that. Yes. Yeah. 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 The thing that's very interesting um, is that every, all you, I work with you all in, in some capacity, and you all are very, very talented, gifted people. And the thing is, like Morris just said, it, once you realize that, nobody can tell you anything. Nobody right. can tell you otherwise yeah. because you all are so talented. I've seen all of you all at work. And I'm a fan of all you all's work and what you Thank do. You. Now, I'm going to throw it to more. Well. Um, you cold absolutely. too, boy. I'm sorry, Gene. I said you cold too. Yeah, yeah. You know, what I, all I'm doing is staying in my lane. I'm glad you brought that up, Gene. But what I'm doing is, is my gift to you all is just think of me as the black Johnny Carson. I'm just using the Sherrard show to be a platform <laughs> to give everybody an opportunity to shine. That's because awesome. on the Johnny Carson show, Jay Leno, um, so many people got their big break just being on the show. So I just, I, when I see talent like that, I want you all to get out there and do your thing. Once this COVID-19 is over, Morris is going to perform on the show. Um, Cherie's going to have us laughing on the show. And Gene, I didn't know you were a singer. You're going to sing on the show too. Put the band back together. <laughs> I do a little comedy too. You know. <laughs> hey, we Gene. a triple threat up in here, baby. You. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Now, now let me let me do a station identification. Then I want to throw something to Gene, uh, to uh, to you, Morris. That's very important. Now we are broadcasting on Comcast NBC. We're talking to the wonderful, uh, lovely Cherie Bynum, as well as my friend Morris Mills and my friend um, Gene Parker. Eugene Parker. I'm Sherrod on the Sherrod Show. Now, um, Morris, you were very candid on your bio. One thing you said that you mentioned in Morris' story on April first. 2015, um, 2014, he moved out to Los Angeles and he had a very interesting story because he was coming out here to perform his music, et cetera. But yeah. things didn't work out and it led to you being homeless. Is that correct, Morris? Yeah, yeah, man. That's, you know, um, I left home. I bought a ticket and it said your date was uh, to take your flight out to LA. 
uh, was April 1st. And I know I wasn't gonna make that announcement until that day. So, so I guess a lot of people thought it was April Fool's Day. And it wasn't, it was, it was the real thing, you know? Uh, yeah, but, but I was being courted in Chicago, right? Hey, come out here, we love your music. We, I can manage you and I can book you if you come out here, you know? And, um, and this person was courting me for two years to come out, you know? And I went out to the Grammys about 2012 and said, yeah, this is what I wanted to do, right? So, and then that one big snowstorm came. I don't know if you guys remember that back in 2010 or something like that, 11, it was a big snowstorm. Yeah. I said, that's it. I had it, you know. So I came out. Um, uh, so when I made the decision to come out, uh, that person didn't show up, you know, and uh, I had to stay with my sister. You know, I said, well, it's only temporarily, you know, I got somebody that's hooked me up, you know. Wanted me to sign a contract. And I said, no, I'm not going to sign anything till I get there. So when I got there, just everything just fell apart, you know. Um, and I had to, I had to make a decision. And it was, I came out in April, took a job in Huntington Beach for about four months. And I said in September that I was going to leave. And something happened, something very spiritual happened to me that day when I made that decision in September. I told God, all right, God, I'm out here now. I could have done this in Chicago. You know, what I'm doing now, I could have done this in Chicago. I didn't come out here for this. What do you want me to do? And I got into this altercation with a family member. And um, I won't go into details, but um, somebody said, you being out here in Huntington Beach, and this person worked for Columbia Records, <clears throat> you being out here in Huntington Beach, you might as well have been in Chicago if you were going to do this, right? And that just hit, right? It just hit. I said, the Lord heard my prayer. Now it's up to me to move on faith. So what I did, I took my last check, my last check. I think it was, it was a um, uh, uh, six hundred dollars, about six hundred dollars. And I knew that you could sleep in a Japanese uh, sauna or Korean sauna. And I was like, yeah, I'm willing to do that, right? So when I started willing to do that, I did it. Moved on faith. I never missed a meal except one night. I didn't have any money. I was going to sleep in the subway. I was just like, yeah, you know, I was going to sleep in the subway. Police told me to get up. And I ended up going to a Denny's and drinking coffee all night. Right? And somebody from the church said, hey, I've been trying to reach you. Uh, I'm going to give you $150 because I ran out of money. You know, ran out of money. And I, great. So, I quickly knew that I needed to get me a job, right? Is that when you went to the start working at the post office? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I, I took a job at the post office because I knew <laughs> this was not going to pan out and I'm too old to be a starving artist. I was too old to be a starving artist. So uh, to make a long story short, man, uh, God just, God showed up at the post office one day. I was working hard. And I remember me talking very candidly to God again. I said, I'm cool. If, if this is what you want me to do, then I'll do it. I'm cool. If I came out here, I tried it. And even when I was homeless, I was performing. I was taking my checks and I would pay my band and I would pay to play. Right? I would pay to play. So you weren't, so, so Morris, they weren't paying you to perform. You were paying to be able to show what you can do. And I was willing to do that. And, and once I got able to be able to make my money to sustain myself, right? Um, I just, the Lord just started moving. 
it just started moving. I was able to quit my job. Uh, I, was, I, was, I was able to do a lot of things. I was able to do a lot of things. And, and I can't tell you because we're writing a book about it. So um, it's, it's going to be it's going to be powerful, man. It's a, it's and your story be- in itself is very powerful, Morris, and it's very motivating to those because you hear often, and Gene, you can attest to this, I'm sure, as well as you, Sheree, you hear a lot of people move out to California. I don't know if you know this, but 30,000 people move out here a month and 30,000 get sent back in about a month or two because oftentimes um, they, 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 they have the wrong approach or they see this um, as an opportunity that's not looking at them as an opportunity. I, I did a segment on the show years ago called I Thought I Was a Model Till I Moved to New York. Oh. And it was about people who, who, models who got one big ad that they did somewhere in Iowa that paid them $1,500 so they thought they were ready for New York. New York wasn't calling them. And so they ended up being homeless because they thought they were bigger than what they were. They were just a big, they were a big fish in a small pond. But in New York, you're a big, in a big pond in a small fish. People oftentimes don't see that. Eugene, um, yep. based upon what Morris was speaking about, what kind of advice could you give individuals who are looking to uh, embark on this journey of being an actor, a singer, a producer, a model, et cetera? Well, my advice is that um, if you absolutely love it, you, you, you dream about it, you think it, you can't get it off you, you can't shake it, Come on. you should go for it. Uh, one is to, is to prepare yourself, is to study, to take classes, uh, because like you said, and what I'm hearing and, and learning also that talent isn't enough. Yeah. That you you've got to be prepared for when those opportunities come. Uh, so so I would say that uh, you have to prepare yourself, learn your craft, whatever that is, and if if you're hungry and you really want to do it, you. For me, what I've learned over the years is that I have to position myself to receive. You know what I'm saying? Just mm-hmm. like, that's why I moved. I, I'm in Vegas. That's why I moved to yeah. Vegas. because I wasn't going to move straight to Los Angeles yet. Because I'm bringing my family. But I'm close enough where I can, I can work and I can position myself to be available as things come. And so, because um, I'm not as, as young as some of you whippersnappers out there. <laughs> Let's get me deep. And so, Mm -hmm. but that was that was my thing is that you know, if if I really want to do this, I have to be in position. I got to position myself to to win, to receive. And if I'm not in position, I'll miss opportunities left and right. What What do you mean by position? Elaborate on that, because I know what you mean. That person that's out there listening to you probably don't know what that means. To put yourself into position, I think one is to to be confident enough to show up, to stand up, to step up, to speak up, and to claim what's yours. Uh, And and I'm not talking about just confidence, but I'm talking about... uh, and, and I'm a believer as well, mm-hmm. you know, but, but, but I'm talking about as an artist mm-hmm. that I have enough humility that I can be directed and I can be taught and I have not arrived and, I, and I'm still learning. I still want to learn. But like some of the people that I've worked with there, we call it into birds. And... Okay. If you call it in the birds, then, then you got to know that you call it in the birds. I don't, I don't have to say it. I don't have to claim who I am. Mm-hmm. I just have to do. I have to produce. And, and, and my work hopefully will show and people, people will offer from my work and my work ethic. Very good. Very good. Now, I'm going to throw it to you, Cherie. Um, now, being a lady in the industry has its own um, issues and variables you have to deal with as well. Um, and how has it, since you've been in the industry for so many years, um, 
still only about 24 years old, but still, you know, been in the industry for so many years. But my question is, um, how were you, how have you been able to remain being a lady and still getting key roles that's going to further your career? I just give God all the praise and glory for that. Because again, sometimes we want to be in some places and I feel like God just protects me because some places that I felt like I, I wanted to be there. And then later on, you find out it was so much BS going on or something bad happened. And it's like, oh, God, I'm sorry. Thank you for protecting me. So delay doesn't mean denied. And I'm learning that with God. Um, and I just think your talent just will always speak for itself, you know. And so I just thank God for giving me a spirit of integrity and just teaching me how to be patient as I go along this journey. And like Eugene said, you know, we're people of a particular age, but then we have people that have come uh, before us, like the Samuel Jacksons and, you know, all the other people that kind of got a quote unquote late start. So age means nothing. You know, it, it's, it's a day with us, it's a thousand with the Lord, or however you go, Eugene, you the pastor here, but you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so you can turn that thing around in a second. And we just got to be, uh, you know, be faithful and be, you know, just 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 wait, just wait it on out. and It's going to come to you. Don't try to get in front of him. And that's if that's more than a notion. It's easier said than done. Uh, but that's just something that I think God has blessed me with, just protecting me uh, from those places where I could have been hurt yeah. had I not had his protection around me. Right. Very good, very good. Morris, I saw you had your hand up. What was your question? Oh, yeah. See, uh, both of y'all said some good stuff, man. Uh, yeah. About one, about, about positioning yourself. And the other one she just said and just slipped my mind, but she she said something. It, it's going to come. But I just want to say, uh, you got you to gotta you know who you are, right? You got to know why you're doing this. Your mama can tell you don't do it. Your daddy can tell you don't do it. Your husband, your wife can tell you don't do it or don't believe in you. It is, it is if God has given you that vision that's in your heart, go for it. That's number one. Number two, um, connect. He said talent is not enough. I write, produce, sing, compose, all of that. I write, I write scripts, you know, all of that. But it is, it's, it's humbling yourself um as well and getting to know people getting to know the right people not just getting to know um a bunch of people but key people and building those relationships you know people people don't want people coming up to um and say hey give me give me give me all the time you know sometimes you just have to be a student sometimes you just don't ask them and when that door is ready for you, God's gonna open that door. You know, when, when, if you, it's a saying, if you, if you prepare yourself, you don't have to get ready. It's because you're already ready. So if right? you're ready, you don't have to get ready. Right, and, and right, and another thing I wanted to say too, you know, do your homework. You know, I came out here on blind faith. And what I mean by blind faith, I trust the Lord. Even though stuff didn't work out with the other person or persons, I still had my trust in the Lord. And what Cherie said was very powerful. Don't be concerned with age. Because God can turn that around. What took you, what made it took you 10 years, God can turn that around in one day just by meeting the right person or to being in, in the right place that God designed you for. Man, I'm true, man. I feel like I'm in church and Bible study. <laughs> that's, that's amen. But that's what happens when you get God's people together. You know, the spirit mm -hmm. just gets you to say things you never even had planned to say. But that's the one thing about it. But the thing that's very important that you mentioned and you all are mentioning as well, um, and I'm not going to get too churchy yet. Um, as a matter of fact, it was funny. I don't know if you noticed, know Cherie, but all three of these, all three of us are preachers. Morris, oh, I Ian, didn't know that. So we're all three preachers. But anyway, <laughs> um, Moses didn't begin to start leading the people till he was eighty years old. Come on, man. And he led them for forty years. So you talk about age not being a factor. Start. He started his journey at eighty years old. 
So my you point is preach. that, and, and, <laughs> and, when, and the thing that makes it so much worthwhile is that this is a rejection business. So we know that, but that one yes can make up for all those 50 no's. But the, my perspective on it, which is very interesting, and I'll just say this and um, throw it back out to you all, is that the best way to always be blessed is to always reach out and help somebody. Whether you're up or whether you're down, always be ready to want to help somebody genuinely. Because when you help somebody alone, God will never forget what you've done for that person. You know, and that's what I just try to do in my lifestyle, whether I have a lot or have a little, but just use this platform right now for 20 million people to be able to see you all. If, if Gene gets his big time break, Morris or Sharif, oh. I'm happy for you. I'm just happy to yeah. be that I can help you all along in some way, shape or form. Just, just give me a thank you. I don't even need the money. Just I thank you because I'm commissioning. I'm reaching out. I'm putting out the, to the universe. Ellen, Ellen DeGeneres, I That's love right. you, baby. Come on now. Come on, Come on. now. That's right. NBC, Christine That's right. Houston, 227. Let's make history. She's still out here. She's That's still right. out here doing her thing. Uh, that's a gold mine. And that would just be making her dreams come true. Everything will be coming full circle. You Very know, good. so that would be, uh, oh, just you talking about helping somebody else. I don't have to even be involved in it just to see Ellen come back and get Miss Christine Houston and allow her to do her thing. Oh, I would be elated just watching that. You and, know what I'm saying? So, and yeah. It's, um, and I have a special place in my heart for my Chicago people, Gene, Morris, Cherie, and all those. This is the second episode in a row I've had my Chicago people on, and I'm just loving it. So when the platform is where I'm sitting in your living room um, in the Universal Studios, I think my first guests are going to be some Chicago people. Hey! That's what I'm talking about. I got two more questions for you all, and then um, we're going to do something very fun, and then we'll close it out. All right. Okay. Now, first question I have, um, I'm going to throw it right to you, Morris, and then Cherie, then to Eugene. Oh, now, right. Morris, um, if you were blessed tonight with $10 million from being on this show, what's the first thing you would do? Oh, wow. That's a good question. Uh, I wouldn't know what I would do. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, Ten million dollars. I would uh, shoot. I can do a lot. For 10 What's million. the first thing you do? I would. Um, I will fund two things. I would do. I would start my own foundation to help the poor. Uh, to help the the children that are in need, the women. And including the men, you know. And the second, mm -hmm. I would fund those foundation that the person uh, continuing someone's legacy, the foundations that he started to help other people. Um, I would do that as well. Very uh, good, very good. What about you, Cherie? After I got finished snot nose crying, because I'll be snot nose crying, Tammy Faye Baker crying, mascara everywhere crying. After I got through doing all of that, um, I don't know. I would have to prioritize my thoughts because when you say that, so much come to mind. I'm like, oh, I help this person, I help that person, I I help my kids get their uh, real estate business together, I'll help my friends with their script. I, you know, I just want to do so much. I think the first thing I would do, of course, is thank God and kind of sit with an accountant and kind of figure out what's the best way to diversify like what would be the best way to spend my money because in my head I want to do a gazillion things so I think I would sit in, in on paper and kind of figure out what would be some of the best ways to uh to, to, to spend that money and allow it to work for me very good very good what about you Jean well what did you do, Jean? I I just but the first thing I would do is I'd go get my mama there off of 76 in May 
and I bring her out to LA and we get us a house in the hills and I'm going to get us a house in LA and further position myself. Oh. That's the first thing I do. I go get mom because I'm trying to, I'm trying to get her now. And, uh, and I get the rest of my family and we get a little bit closer to the prize. Uh, but that's the first thing I would do. I go, I go buy a home uh, so that we can set up camp and, uh, and continue to create. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Um, now, for our audience members who are just joining in and watching us, um, we are looking, we are interviewing and speaking into the awesome acting, um, prominent pastor, Eugene Parker, who's doing great things in the industry and also very uh, much um, concerned. His post is always on helping other people. And then also Morris Mills, the singer, the songwriter, um, who has a very interesting story in a book coming out about how he arrived in L.A. and how his 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 album, Revival, it was inspired by the times we're living in. And then we have Cherie Bynum, who just loved laughing and loved making people laugh and doing <laughs> wonderful things um, in the acting industry, as well as producing as well. So my last question to you all is for the fans who are um, watching and would like to um, keep in contact with you. I'll start with you, Cherie. What is your um, social media information? <laughs> Can I tell you something? That's yep. so funny. Um, this is this is one of my downfalls as an actress. I'm going to be very transparent. I'm not a social media person, but I know we're in the age of social media. So I have to get better and I may need to hire a social media manager and people are probably doing this to me, but social media, I don't, I just want to say it ain't, I don't know. I so, just, so, I don't know, so but sure. I am on Facebook. I am on Instagram, but can I just, you know, holler out those handles? Oh, cool. I, I got to get better with that. And, and I do. I really, I really do. Go ahead and tell everybody it's going to be on the monitor. Go ahead and tell them your social media information so they can follow you. And then tell them where you got your toaster oven from, too. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm teasing you, but, but go ahead with your social media information, Cherie. You just didn't hear what I said. <laughs> well, well, you said you're on Facebook, so go ahead with your Facebook. Uh, Cherie Bynum on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, Eugene, I know you laughing at me right now. I could just crawl <laughs> under a rug right now. Um, yeah, so no, I am on okay. Facebook. What you say? I'm the same, girl. Stop playing. <laughs> oh my gosh, right? I'm supposed to rattle that off. I had did a play at um at the den in Chicago with the director's haven. And when I came off stage, this guy was like, Oh, you were phenomenal. Uh, what's your social media handle? I was like, I'm on Facebook. Like, I don't <laughs> It's okay. I need to get better. And that's part of the perfection and positioning that Eugene was talking about because it's a work in progress. I, yeah, so now, yeah. the next time I'm asked that, I have to get better at those things I'm not that great in. And, okay. that, and that's one of the things that I do need to work on. I really do. What, what but think? Ellen, mm -hmm. if you need to reach me, I'm on Facebook. S-H-E-R-E-E, -E -E, last name, B as in boy, Y-N-U-M, Cherie Bynum, Ellen, the gent come on, Ellen, come okay. on, Ellen. Ellen, I love you. That's why, that's why oftentimes I have guests on the show, big wigs are inquiring of, and, and if I don't have your information, there's nothing I can really say. So that's great. I'm glad you put it out there. It will be um, on the monitor. Now, Eugene, what about you, sir? Okay, so I'm also on Facebook, Eugene Parker. Look for my look for me with some hair. I always got a wig or some known uh, com comic. Uh, my Instagram is Eugene Parker Films at Eugene Parker Films. You can hit me there. Um, that's about it. You know, I, I too I get on Instagram. My daughter be like, "Uh, you might want to post that pic right now, Dad." You know, oh okay. You know, so <laughs> I, I need I need to up my my social media piece. But uh, you know, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Um, God, I'm, I'm on Snapchat. My daughter got me on Snapchat. I don't know, I don't know what my Snapchat handle is, but, uh, but you can reach me at Eugene Parker 29 at gmail.com. Very good. Okay. Very good. Oh, wait, okay. Well, I know my email, so you can meet, you can get me at Sheree Bynum at gmail.com. And then my Instagram is Sheree Bynum presents. Mm -hmm. Boom. Woo! 
Okay, very good. I was under very the gun. Good. Sure you're probably yeah. gonna you're probably gonna get emails. People are gonna be asking you that you get your toaster oven from Zaire's Adventures. You got to be able to respond to that. All right. Anyway, we're moving on. <laughs> All right. Now for you, um, Morris. A um, couple of things I want to pull you in, Morris. Morris has a um, being a Prince fan and being um, so talented at um, imitating Prince and. Um, I'm sorry. I don't imitate Prince. Well, to be able to uh, keep his his legacy alive, um, you were doing a revival tour that was really successful, and they gifted you with something. And I told you to bring it on the interview. Did you bring it with you? Uh, did I bring it with me? Is it somewhere? Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Let me give him a moment. It's a special, un un unbelievable gift that he has that um, he's going to be showing us that was gifted to him in Minnesota from um, the where Prince had come from. Look at that puppy right there. Tell us a little bit about what you got in your hand. Oh, this is a cloud. The cloud is a cloud. You know, it's oh, a oh my God! Yeah. Absolutely the, incredible. Tell us the story behind that, Morris. Well, uh, give me a second. I'm gonna put it back in. I'm gonna give me a quick second. Okay, let back me hold on. Trophy case. That Say is what? beautiful. Put it back I in the trophy know, case. Right? Yeah, yeah. Oh I, well, it's in the case. I played this baby. This, this, this don't sit on the wall. Um, uh, it don't sit on the wall. But uh, we, uh, my wife and I, was invited to Minneapolis, and uh, we decided to go to Pacey Park. Right. We took a look around, and they were so very kind to us, you know, because we went on one of the tours. But anyway, so we got the cloud. But I was the first one to receive the cloud in hand at Paisley Park. Wow, that's awesome. Beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, Morris, um, that is a replica of what Prince actually used in his concerts? Yeah, this is, uh, this is, a, uh, this is a diamond series, and it's made by Skecher, but the original person that, that that makes the cloud guitar, this this guitar. Uh, his name is David Ranson, mm -hmm. right? So uh, I'm going to get that particular guitar, you know, the exact original that he had. You know, they were, they were, um, they had these at Paisley Park and it was made by Sketch. It was not made by, uh, but, but for me to receive the first one that they were given uh, um, selling that Paisley Park, uh, I was the first one in the hand to receive this, so yeah. Very, very good. All right, Morris, really quick, we're running low on time. So um, mm -hmm. please tell us where we can purchase your Revival album and also where we can, your fans can reach out to you on Facebook. Very easy. If you just Google my name, just, uh, it's Morris Mills and uh, I, Morris Mills on Facebook. I got about two, three pages. I got a fan page. I got an Instagram page, Morris Mills, right? Uh, Twitter, Morris Mills LA. And my own website, morrismills.com. Very good. All right. Now, um, before we close the show, I want to say a couple things, and then we're going to do something very fun. Now, um, I have a fundraiser that I'm currently doing um, for those who, um, everybody knows essential workers who, um, only many times only have one mask they can get <laughs> per week that they have to use to stretch until the next time. And that's very unsafe. So I started a foundation from my um, SMCC foundation that is helping the less fortunate and also the Sherrod Show. So I would like for you to go to my Facebook page, the Sherrod Show, and please support the um, foundation. What I'm doing is that any donation you give, I'm going to send out a mask to a central worker. You tell me where just so that they can be able to um, have a mask that's going to last them longer than just one week. It's going to be one of the Sherrod Show logos. You can give a dollar, $10, whatever, but it's only a few days left in it. So please support the cause. I pray that, um, well, I appreciate you, Gene, donating. Wonderful gentlemen um, donating and supporting the cause. I pray that you, Sheree, and um, as well as Morris, as well as anyone out there can be able to support the cause. It's just giving back because it can be very unsafe. And a lot of those essential workers are out there, you know, taking care of um, people who are sick with the virus. 
my sister is one of them. You know, she's actually a caregiver. We only give her one mask and she's exposed to the COVID-19 every day. So help out with that cause so I can be able to send more masks to those essential workers. Is that fair enough? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That's just outstanding, baby. That's wonderful. Absolutely. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Gene. Now, the fun part. All right. All of my guests on the show have to do this. Um, some of the biggest celebrities have to do it who show, show up on the Sherrod Show, as well as um, those who just love being here, and I love appreciating that. So I want you all to sing about 30 seconds of one of your favorite artist songs, a cappella, for the world to see. Okay? Favorite song can be old wow. school, new school, whatever. But 30 <laughs> seconds, and we're going to close down that. <laughs> and um, I, I know, Cherie, you're ready to do it, so I'm going to go ahead and um, give you for first to sing 30 seconds of your favorite artists. Get it. Once upon a time, not long ago, where peace oh, that's and not and live life flow, that's where laws were burning and justice stood. That, that's rapping. That's just singing. <laughs> nice try. I'm a rapping and singing mixed up. Uh, and I will always love you. <laughs> there we go. Very good. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Okay, and now, Gene, your turn. All right, I'm gonna hit you with this one. There I go, there I go, there I go, there I go. Pretty baby, you are the soul who snaps my control. Such a funny thing, but every time I'm near you, I never can be heard. You bring me a smile and then I'm wrapped up in your magic. There's music all around me, crazy music, music that keeps calling me so very close to you, turns me your slave. All right, that's it. Wow, very good, very good. Okay. We okay. move. Good. Now, Gene, who were you singing? That, that was uh, Moody's Mood. Um, oh, I can't even think of who. So many people that have done that, but I'm, I'm, I love the old crooners, the... Very you know, Matt King Coles and the Sam Cook. Now, why you didn't ask me who I was thinking? You, I knew it was Whitney Houston. Oh, okay. <laughs> I knew that. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. As a matter of fact, I, it was so the, uncanny. Okay. <laughs> most, of the, most of the ladies uh, who are on the show, they usually love singing Whitney Houston. Something about Whitney Houston. Everybody loves it. Okay, Morris, it's time for you to close it down. Uh uh, I ain't singing. Mm mm. Mm mm. <laughs> Morris, um, Nope, nope, you got the wrong guy. I think oh, okay. the, the very singer on oh, the I hear you. What what did you say? <laughs> you know, um do you, do you okay. <laughs> Look at your face. You're like, no, he did. Is he done it? Why you being difficult, Mars? Y'all <laughs> did give him his lemon, his lemon tea and ginger. <laughs> right. Go ahead, Mark. I'm well, doing this. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Who who can I sing? Uh, I phoned you up, phoned uh, uh, you all night long. That was me. <laughs> oh, right my now. God, John, I heard you coming <laughs> from me. I need you killing no man. Mm. There's a big talk going around, and I think it's funny. Uh, I understand the kind of controversy that you see. Mm, that was flat, wasn't it? Boy, you better bring an army if you're going to funk with me. Uh, Cause I'll funk you up. Say, funk you all night long. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. That's off of your album. Which album is that off of? Uh, it's called uh, Up the Dawn. Very good. It's like Very 2019, good. yeah. Uh -huh. well, I, could, I couldn't think of anybody except Nat King Cole, and that was the Christmas tree song. It's okay. Right, right, right. Nothing wrong with betting on yourself. We really appreciate that. Well, well I, really I want, look, I won that. We <laughs> give you that. <laughs> we'll let the audience decide on that one. We'll let the audience decide on that one. Great. <sighs> but I want to thank you all for being a guest on the Sherrard Show. Um, we really appreciate you all stopping by. Eugene Park for the actor. Thank Sherrard. Doing really big, big things in the industry. We always enjoy having you on the show. As well as Cherie Bynum, um, the lovely actress. Oh, 
just having us laughing and smiling. You could be in a bad mood, but you're here and see Sharif and you're smiling again. That's wonderful. Always and thank always, you. He's always doing big things in the industry, always busy producing things. And he's also producing life. Uh, um, he's producing the soundtrack of your life. That's more. We love seeing that. Oh, I'm Sherard. Yeah. In our next episode, we are going to have the Iron Mike himself, Mike Tyson, by Sherard. Show. You don't want to miss that. In the meantime, have a great weekend. See you next episode. Thank you.